Hey guys, welcome back. It's Eric Floberg here, back with a tutorial today. Haven't done a tutorial in a while. In my last video, I asked you guys if you wanted to get images that looked like this. And you pretty much overwhelmingly said that you want me to teach you this, so. So many people talk about creative portraiture in wedding photography, but a lot of people just kind of like, don't really care about the dance floor, or the end of the night, the party. It's just like, eh, set up a couple flashes in the corners, get a trigger, and then you kind of light up the room. It's like where everybody coasts at the end of the day. I honestly love being intentional about making really cool and fun and exciting images on the dance floor when there's a party going. So this look is really cool for that effect, making it look like a party, making it look exciting, interesting, fun, uh, like the action happening. So I want to share it with you today. Let's do it. <laughs> Pretty much any setup will work with this. You just need a camera body, obviously, and a wide angle lens. Could be fixed, could be a zoom lens, just needs to be pretty wide, and an on-camera flash. To make this happen, you need to have the direct flash pointing directly at the subject. And I prefer a 24 millimeter lens. I shoot with all prime lenses, and so my widest lens is a 24 millimeter, and that's great for when I'm on the dance floor, I can get as much as I can in the shot. It's wide enough, it doesn't feel like it's encroaching on them. If I could be far enough away that you know just captures kind of the whole scene that's happening. And really I kind of target uh, the center of the frame and whoever's in the center of the frame when I shoot these. A really important step in this is, uh, especially with this speed light that I have, uh, what makes it so great is I can zoom in the flash. So it takes that oval of light on the direct flash and it narrows it in to a small section in the frame to a small oval, so it's isolating a subject in the middle of the frame. Once I do that and I dial in those settings, then I go to my camera and I start dragging the shutter. And you might be confused as to what that means. Dragging the shutter is allowing for the shutter to open up for a longer period of time. So normally in photography, you have a really fast shutter um, so that it freezes the image. Now, what's unique about this is the flash is what's freezing the image in these images, uh, but when you leave the shutter open for a little bit longer, it allows you to kind of drag and move all the light in the frame to cover the frame. So it's isolating the subject with that flash and freezing them in that spot, and then it's just kind of going crazy everywhere else to get all those light sources around them and it looks like a party. So let's dive into the settings that I use for this and make sure you have it perfect. And this may be different for different speed lights, it may be different for different on-camera on flashes. So you're gonna have to figure that out with your own flash. Today I'm using a 600 EXRT and I'm gonna turn it on to manual mode. So I have this little mode button here. I'm gonna turn it on to manual. Manual who? Uh, manual mode. Then I'm going to increase the zoom from uh, 35, which is what it's set at now, and I'm going to increase that to the highest it can go, which is 200 millimeters. That's gonna give me that small oval effect in the middle of the frame. Then, knowing the settings that I like for my camera, I'm going to decrease the strength of the flash down to one over 64th for power. So to review, it's manual for the mode. We're gonna zoom it into 200 millimeters and then one over 64th uh, for the power. So for my camera settings, like I said, you need a slow shutter. So I'm gonna bring the shutter all the way down to one over fourth of a second. I'm gonna bring my aperture all the way up to F7.1. And then I'm gonna rock my ISO at 200, pretty low there. Each one of those things are gonna produce something different in the image. This is pretty much exactly what I use every time I do this technique on the dance floor, these exact specs. Now, depending on available light in the room and strength of the flash and how close you are to people, you might need to change these little by little as you go on, but it's a really good thing to do trial and error for. So let's test it out. Thankfully, I have my studio with all the rad people to <laughs> do a middle of the day dance party. So a few other things to note as you're doing this, you need to compensate for light in the space. So unfortunately, it's the middle of the day and we, you know, closed the curtains in the place, but it was still, there was still ambient light. So you can see that in the images, you see like, you see the natural light kind of 
pasting all across the frame. But if you're in a dark room, uh, it, it's absolutely cut. So the, the specs that I gave you, the, the settings that I gave you at the beginning is usually right where I'm at on a dance floor at a wedding. I actually had to make my shutter slower to get more of the string lights up top and shaking them into the frame, moving my camera around after I fired the flash. And I needed to raise my aperture and lower my ISO so that ambient light would just kind of wash away and I could direct flash harder on the subject so it would isolate them more and then I could get the string lights in there. It was a bit sloppy, wasn't perfect. A lot of times this is trial and error. You're shooting a lot on the dance floor. You're, you're doing a ton of stuff to make sure that you get really good ones. Because a lot of times like the string lights will just go over people's faces and you just gotta keep shooting over and over. Huge component, get up and over the crowd. Like up, down, that helps a lot because usually lights are on the ceiling and when you do that, it tends to make the lights on top of the frame and around instead of over their faces. It does seem kind of silly to make sure your focus is right when you're shooting at like f7.1, f11, but it is important because sometimes your lens is set for something way closer to the lens earlier in the day. So just real quickly, you know, get focus and then start shooting. I do back button focusing, so whenever I touch the shutter, it doesn't refocus at all. I'm just shooting over my head and not worrying about the focus because I know it's going to be in focus at 7.1 in that general area. Always shoot raw and make sure that you're exposing for the subject with the flash. Um, that will make it a lot easier in your post-processing and you can do really cool stuff with it in low light when you're shooting raw. Really never, just don't, just don't shoot JPEG. Just don't do it, just shoot raw. Trust me, shoot raw. And something to help with that ambient light, if there's ambient light in a venue that you're shooting, in a location that you're shooting, ask if curtains can be closed, ask if lights can be turned down. You wanna get rid of all that ambient light so it feels like a party in there, it feels dark, you have all the party lights going. Usually the DJ booth has stuff going so that helps with the party vibe and those lights shaking around. Another huge thing with this technique, guys, it's really fun to do, but you gotta be careful not to uh, just do it all the time. Balance it with other stuff. Balance it with bounce flash. Balance it with off-camera flash. Do other timeless things with the dance floor. Don't just shoot this because maybe 20 years from now we look back at these images and we're like, whoa. And you don't want like the whole dance floor to be like that. So do a couple things here and there. This is really cool and it's fun and it's different and it can make you stand out and be different and that's awesome. But even brainstorm about other things you could do in conjunction with this. Think about that direct flash. Maybe you take it off the camera and put it on a trigger somewhere else and you do the same thing from a different angle. Maybe you play with more lights in the background. You bring lights, you do things that change it up and make it your own. Ultimately, I want you to lean into what makes you different. That's my mantra and that's what I want you to do. Find your unique voice and go after it. That was it guys, quick tutorial today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, if you liked that video, go ahead and like it, subscribe, ring that notification bell, give me your social security number. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at eric.floberg. Shoot me a DM if you wanna chat a little bit. Would love to see you, talk to you there. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. That's fine, it won't pick it up if you whisper. Shut up! <laughs>